Tiger, everybody. One of their saludos. Excuse me. I need a haircut. I'm going to go get one tomorrow, but I got things to do today. So, uh, today I heard Swifty Blue got busted at a high school going after some 16-year-olds. And then, uh, I guess because some 16-year-old put a video up. Uh, apparently punking Swifty, right? So he got arrested. Then I, so I looked at some other thing, and then this other guy was talking about that um, somebody else had made a video that was SNY in protective custody, talking about anybody that has a YouTube channel is deemed no good in the joint. They're, they're pieces of shit, right? So that they're, they're dropouts. And you know what? I give a fuck about neither one of that shit. <laughs> uh, I did want to tell you about, touch back on uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the the thing with my pops, my dad. <clears throat> my dad always tried to keep us out of gangs and he wanted us involved in it. But at the same time, he, he kind of enjoyed that life, but he really wasn't running around acting like that anymore. You know what I mean? He did still to see his home. He still, every once in a while that I know of, uh, he got involved in an anti-gang program called the Yulete out of, uh, it, it's Eddie Hernandez's boxing gym out of, off, it's an old fire station off of Olympic in East LA. It used to be called the Yulete. Well, my dad was part of that. Um, that's a fun, that's actually the, the organization that got the gang members for, uh, Boulevard Nights. So, um, you know, the background, those are the, that's where they went to get the gang members. So, uh, in the end, the youth they got, uh, dismantled because apparently somebody from the organization or multiple people were, uh, funneling money to it. So it was some kind of scam or something. Something was going on. Um, anyways, but during that program, they uh, uh, they decided to take gang members from different gangs up to uh, Big Bear. And they were going to rent these big-ass uh, uh, cabins, you know, like, like uh, where like a gang of beds in them, like, like a dorm. Right? So they had a girl section, they had a guy section, and these were all active gang members. Well, us being, because my pops, me and my brother were allowed to go, and we went. And we were the only ones at the time that weren't gang members. But, uh, as, as, and we were extremely young compared to these guys. All these guys were, fuck. I want to say I was like, we were 10 or 11. They were like 16, 17, 18. I think they were under 18, but that's around the, the age group. So to us, they were a lot older. Um, but that was that was the type of thing my father took us to. And, and like I said, it, it left an impression on me. It left, uh, it wasn't a positive one. You know what I mean? Because the stuff I learned there with those those kids at that age was just, I shouldn't have learned. <laughs> I learned how to smoke weed out of out of an apple. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, all the dirty jokes started started to get explained. You know when I was at that age, and and my dad, I don't remember seeing them up there. It's just it was always just us and other kids, and we used to take off with them. They would drink beer. They would get us a drink. I don't even know where they got the beer from. They would, they, would, they had all kinds of stuff. They had weed, they had beer. Some people are frills, but back then, I didn't smoke that shit. But, uh, yeah, the, my dad put us in, and I don't think he, he intended to do it, but he put us in a bad light with these, uh, well, they thought it was cool. They wanted to teach these youngsters what to do. And then the girls, of course, they were trying to be mama type. Oh, kids, don't give that to them. You know, that kind of thing. You know how it is with the homegirls, the fucking homeboys. The, the homegirls, a lot of times, will try to keep the youngsters out of it. But, you know, knowing it's bad, but they still promote that shit. 
So that was something that we did when we were younger. And, and like I said, my father had no intentions of leading us in the direction he did. But I think at the same time, he implanted things in us without realizing it. Um, my father was a really smart man. He was really, he was, uh, and I'm not saying it because he's my father. Uh, he was a really smart man. He could figure out anything. And, uh, you know, even the smartest people get trapped in this life. You know, we get trapped and, and start making dumb decisions. I'm not the, the smartest person in the world, but I'm not, by far, I'm not the dumbest either. And I, I, uh, I've made some pretty dumb mistakes in my life. So that was just going to show you with share uh, my experience with that. The um, being around gang members and not being a gang member, kind of leading you into that. You know what I mean? Leading a horse to the water kind of thing. So be careful what you got around your kids. Be careful uh, what you show your kids because it, it might make a difference. Have a blessed one, you guys.